Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this section, we will talk about the user plane function uh, in a lot more detail and look at some of the uh, key functions and capabilities of the user plane function. So the user plane function um, is one of the main elements in the 5G core. Uh, before we look at these bullet points, uh, let's uh, let's kind of go through the architecture diagram just one more time, uh, and then we will go through these points. So you have uh, the user equipment here, right? This user equipment is connected to our new radio, uh, the radio access network. This new radio is connected to our user plane function. And this new radio is also connected to the uh, uh, access uh, mobility function AMF. The AMF is connected to our SMF session management function, and the SMF has an interface into the UPF. Uh, the UPF uh, also has an interface into our data networks, uh, external IP networks, uh, and this is the the architecture we are familiar with so far, right? So this interface is called the N6. This is your N4. Um, this is your N3. And this is your N2. Right, and then you have the N11 interface here. So uh, now that we have this picture, let's go through these uh, bullet points here. So the UE uh, sends all the traffic to the NR and the NR sends that traffic to the UPF. So the UPF processes and forwards all user data it is controlled by the SMF. Uh, so the SMF has an interface directly to the UPF and all the control signaling happens through this interface. It connects to the external IP networks uh, and acts as an anchor for the UE towards external networks hiding the mobility. And we will look at this in a lot more detail here. So uh, as we see, UPF has a connection out to the uh, DNN, the data networks, um, via the N6 interface. It generates the charging data records and the usage records, and these are sent over to the SMF. So one element that is also uh, possible uh, in the network is called a charging function. So you have a CHF here, which is connected to the SMF. So now um, the UPF is in direct line with all the user plane traffic. So this guy has the uh, closest knowledge about how much data uh, a subscriber is using and based on that it can generate uh, certain records and events and these are delivered to the SMF uh, in a timely manner uh, and the SMF generates the charging records the CDRs for a given subscriber and those are sent over to the CHF at either predefined times or can be based on the um, the amount of data right so you may have some logic here in the SMF that tells, uh, okay, whenever a subscriber has burned, say, 100 MB of data, you send me a CDR, uh, or it can be based on time that every minute I want CDR for every subscriber, things like that. So that's up to the configuration. Uh, the UPF is capable of performing packet inspections uh, and apply configured policies, uh, such as gating, uh, redirection of traffic, uh, data rate uh, limitations, and stuff like that. So the UPF, uh, all the data traffic is going through the NR to the UPF out to the network. So the UPF uh, is able to apply all the policies that are provisioned by the SMF into the UPF. Uh, and those policies can be one of these, right? Uh, so the UP SMF, just to make this more complete, you can also have a policy charging function that is connected to the SMF. And the policy charging function has all the policies uh, for this given subscriber. Uh, buffering of downlink data. So uh, for idle mode subscribers, uh, we can have um, we can have uh, data that will come into the network, right? And it will get buffered uh, at the user plane function, and the user plane function will notify the SMF that there is incoming data for a subscriber. SMF in turn notifies the AMF. AMF pages uh, the relevant uh, radio access network. Um, the radio access network pages the subscriber, the subscriber responds, initiates a connection, and then at that point, um, you will have uh, a GTP tunnel uh, between the UE 
NR and the UPF and then this data that was being buffered here is being delivered, will get delivered to this user. So it buffers the download data for idle mode UVs until they come back, go through the paging process um, and um, connect to the network. The UPF can be deployed in series, uh, unlike in 4G. So you can actually have uh, multiple uh, UPFs uh, within a given 5G network. And um, these UPFs can have each have different uh, um, functions. And we will look at some of the use cases why we would want to do that in the later slides here. Uh, UPF applies all the QoS policies on packets in the downlink direction uh, and more on the QoS section you know, when we talk about QoS. But in a sense, your UPF uh, has direct visibility into uh, all the user plane traffic and it is able to uh, maintain your QoS requirements, like uh, mark packets with the appropriate DSCP values um, and stuff like that, right? Uh, compared to the EPS, UPF uh, resembles S gateway and P gateway in some aspects. So things like, um, you know, we are familiar with the PCEF uh, terminology from 4G, which is the policy charging enforcement function. This was uh, present in the P gateway um, in the 4G world, but now that functionality has been moved into the user plane function, right? And similarly, you have the buffering of downlink packet uh, data here. Uh, this used to be a function of the S gateway uh, in uh, in 4G, but now it is a function of the UPF. So yeah, all in all, um, uh, in 5G, you have uh, the, the, the functionality of S gateway, P gateway has been kind of uh, distributed into the UPF. So that was uh, a comparison uh, between the 4G and 5G architecture, just to help you understand. Uh, in the next section, we are going to look uh, a lot more into the SSC modes in 5G. So see you in the next uh, lecture.